Hey everyone. So when I first started recording this video, I thought I was just going to do an open box and review of my new Striker 4 BIMBOX desktop. Then I thought about a lot of the questions I get from you guys about hardware and Revit and hardware and BIM. And there's usually two questions. There's first, what computer should I get? What hardware should I get? And the second is desktop or laptop. So what I decided to do was not just do an open box and review of the Striker 4 desktop from BIMBOX um, that I've been using for almost four months now, um, but I decided to compare it to um, the essentially laptop version of the desktop. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna walk through the desktop. I'm gonna unbox it. I'm gonna show you what's inside, um, talk about some of the specs. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about the laptop. And then I'm going to show you benchmarks and how they compare and then talk about a little bit about what that means as far as desktop versus laptop performance versus cost and all that good stuff. So let's jump in first and take a look at the desktop and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at the laptop. Hey everyone, Jeff here. I got a super, super exciting video for you guys today that I'm I'm very excited about, I'm not gonna lie. So for those of you that have followed me over these years, you know that in the last three to four years, I've used specifically BIM box computers. And so I've been using a laptop for a while and I'm gonna do that review and I'm gonna continue using the laptop, um, but I was dying to get my hands on a new desktop. My history with computers has always been building my own custom gaming PCs. And so I have a special place in my heart for custom desktops, especially gaming get desktops. I also wanted a dedicated desktop for live streaming and creating videos and video editing. So I couldn't think of a better opportunity to team up and collaborate with BIMBOX. And today it's finally here. So something I haven't done before ever on this channel is actually an unboxing. So I thought this would be kind of a fun opportunity to do that. So bear with me as I awkwardly open some things and talk about it, um, but hopefully it gives you a glimpse inside what these BIMBOX desktops look like. Without further ado, let's start opening up this thing. Uh, it's the first time I'm seeing it. I did take it out of this big box. So you guys can see here, there's some branding on this. It was dirty. I don't know, it's just I, I wanted to sort of take it out to see. And then of course it's in this box here. So first things first, um, but one thing you'll notice is that this box doesn't have any BIMBOX branding. It can be kind of thrown off for some people, but if you know PCs uh, and you're a geek like myself, you know that this Eclipse P600S um, is actually the type of case that it's in, and it's a pretty phenomenal case. So think about it as like having Bose speakers in your Honda. You kind of know, you know, it's always nice to know the brand of what it is. So I'm okay with it. Just be wary of that. The other thing that it came with is the accessory kit. So let's pull that up there. So that's all the accessories. Uh, if you want me to put that open real quick, you can see uh, it's got all the hardware. It's got the, uh, the, the slides for the hard drive, the, the uh, interfaces, the motherboard pieces, all that good stuff in there. So you can see that's the Eclipse case stuff. And then there's a nice little oof, heavy, heavy bin box thing, which uh, maybe we'll open that first. Yeah, let's open that first. I'm not really sure what's in this. It's pretty heavy though, so maybe it's parts and pieces. I'm not really sure what it is. Oh, maybe cables? I don't know, let's see. I probably shouldn't be doing this with one hand, but I didn't have enough tripods around, so here we go. Oh yeah, these are all extra cables. Oh, some nice extra uh, cables for the motherboard, our big boy cable for this power supply, which I believe is 1200 watts. I don't remember all the exact specs, uh, but I will run through them and I'll make sure the details when I when I fire it up and you guys see it. But um, I believe it's a 1200 watt power supply. Um, Binbox was also kind enough to send a keyboard and mouse. Um, I've got my own keyboard and mouse that I prefer, but that was, that was thoughtful of them. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure my keyboard and mouse will get trashed by the kids again. So it's always good to have some backups, to be completely honest with you. All right, so let's let's pop open this guy and uh, we'll start to take a look at uh, what's inside here. Well, it's here, check it out. So, let me go on this side where there's some light. This is the Striker 4, so it's the latest chassis model from, from BIMBOX. This is the uh, i9 uh, 13th Gen bad boy. 
I'll take some closer up shots, but you can see here, hopefully you guys can see it in the light. We've got some, we've actually got some, some etched in, not just striker logos, but Revit logos as well as bin box. So super excited about that. First time I'm seeing that in person. Very excited about that. That's my hand sketch being etched onto this thing. Let's see the front here. There's a front, kind of hard to see in the dark. So we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll throw it on the desk, get some good lighting going and uh, we'll start taking this thing apart. See what it looks like on the inside. Cause of course I'm a desktop guy. So I gotta see what this thing looks like on the inside. So we'll see you in one second. All right, so here I am back behind my desk in an area where you guys are a little more familiar with the background. <laughs> so again, this is the first time I'm seeing this. Uh, I know the specs. Um, I talked to uh, Bimbox and I had some, you know, the custom custom graphic on all that good stuff. This is the first time I'm seeing this. And honestly, I haven't looked too much into the case. The last one I had was their Striker 3, I think, which was the metal um, case, which was awesome. Um, but I'm curious to see what this thing's all about. So let's take a look at it. We'll start around the outside. We'll jump in the inside. First, let's look at the back panel. So hopefully you guys can see that. See, we got plenty of, plenty of hubs here. Uh, I think it's an Asus motherboard. Yeah, Republic of Gamers, so ROG, if you guys are familiar. One spec I 100% will not forget is this is a 4090 full desktop card. So notice how many spaces <laughs> this thing takes. Um, I do want to do a dedicated capture card for streaming. So that's one of the things I'm very excited about as far as as far as this desktop is concerned. So I'm hoping that there's room in there with this 4090. There's clearly slots, but I don't know if there's gonna be room. Although there's this extra space here, so we'll see. Um, and obviously the power supply down here. All right, so the side panel, let's start with this first side here, um, which I'm not sure which side this is. I think it's the back back of the motherboard side. So we'll see in a second here, but it took me a second to realize that there was no, no screws. I'm trying to find the screws to turn this thing off. So check this out, this is pretty wild. So if you look here, there are some hinges. So you can see the hinges there. There's a hinge there as well. Um, and then there's this little tab here. I'm like, what is that? So I pulled it and sure enough, it's, it's actually a magnet. Let's do that again. Hear that click? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Anybody who's ever built desktops in the past with all the screws and little knobs and all that stuff and the slides and you had to slide them in and move them out and the fans were attached and all that. This is, this is nice. All right, so this guy, let's open this thing here. Got to move all my peripherals out of the way here. Beautiful. All right, so this is the, the back of the motherboard. So you can see in here, got some nice cable management. They did a good job here with the fan techs. You can see we've got our fan power cables up here, at the back of the CPU right here, of the processor, I'm sorry. Uh, some nice cable management. There's the power supply down there. Looks like lots of breathing room. I'm excited to see what these fans are all about. There's also a little filter, it looks like, on the bottom. Looks like there's a filter I can change. So we're gonna check out the bottom now because I'm curious to see that before we look at the front um, and the top panels and all this good stuff. So let's check out the bottom now. All right, so we're looking at the bottom here and you could see, like I thought there was this slide out filter for the power supply. And that's really nice, especially when it's on the bottom there because obviously that can collect some dust. So this should trap quite a bit of the dust. Enough room for some venting pulling in. So that's pretty sweet. And it looks like you can pull that out at any time to clean it up. Nice little touch there. So let's jump uh, Let's jump to the, to the front panel, the top panel, and then we'll jump around to the side and see the guts, the good part. All right, so we're looking at the front panel here. I haven't, haven't played with this yet. So oh, there we go, flips up. That also feels like a magnet. That's kind of nice. We got two USBs, a USB-C, a reset button, headphones, and microphone. Nice. This thing looks like, oh, another magnet. Wow. Oh, look at that. Nice filter there. Looks like there's a little net there. Cool. So that's a magnet there. Pretty neat. That looks like it might be extra airflow, maybe? You gotta take that off when you're using it? I'm not sure. I'll have to ask. Looks like that wants to come off when you're using it. Let's quickly look at the top and then we'll check out the insides, the real, real good stuff. So here I am at top. I didn't feel like tilting it to the side because <laughs> it's just a lot of work on my little desk. So let's see, hopefully I can reach here and see what's going on up on top. Oh, looks like another thing there, another little filter. So I'm wondering, it looks like there's airflow, but I'm wondering if these are filters or if you, got, you want to take those off when you're really cranking to let the air flow? I'll have to reach out to Binbox and ask. Maybe you guys in the comments know. Um, but 
That's kind of interesting. So again, it looks like we have uh, this magnetic thing. Let's pull this bad boy. So I like the magnet. I'm not sure how I feel about this just being a piece of cloth. Um, I feel like maybe something metal to grab, which there's a little edge there. So actually, you know what? Yeah, there is. It's a little dimple there, so you could grab it. I just feel like that cloth is going to go over time, but I guess we'll see. All right, so let's open it up. Oh. All right, well, here it is. Check out the guts of this thing. This is this is pretty. So let's just take a look at what we got in here. So first, down on the bottom here, you can see we've got the power supply tucked in there. It is a thousand watts of power supply. Up here, we've got the one and only GeForce RTX 4090. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, seriously, like that is just nuts. And you can see it says, please plug in the GPU cable before turning on. So reminder there to plug that in, 600 watt cable. That's why you need, <laughs> that's why you need a thousand watt uh, power supply. You can see we've got some two huge fans on the, actually on the front of the box. And so that's where that panel is. So I'm, I'm thinking you remove that panel when you use it, but I'm not really sure. It still looks like there's airflow. So I'll, again, I'll have to ask. Um, through, up top, we've got three huge fans that are attached to a radiator that are attached to the liquid cooler for this beautiful, I mean, look at that. Look at that cooler with the BIM box logo on it. That is, that is pretty. We have the Maximus Hero graphics card, or Maximus Hero motherboard. As I said, it's the Asus Rogue. Right here, we got our G-Skill G -Skill, uh, RAM. That is 128 gigabytes of RAM. 128 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> and then another fan on the back here. I'm curious to see how all these pressures work and stuff. I'm, I'm going to geek out on that when I turn it on and stuff. But I want to spend a couple days really putting this thing to the paces, Twin Motion, Revit, Premiere, uh, games of course i'm gonna play some games on it come on <laughs> games and so on and so forth um, especially the camera you know guys i do have this dslr camera when i'm live streaming which requires quite a bit of a video um, the laptops have been able to do it so i'm assuming this will but i'm curious to see how much better and and, and how much smoother this thing is um, just to quickly run through again the specs we have a intel 13th gen i9, um, whatever those specs are for for gigahertz, I don't I don't fully remember off the top of my head, but it's the highest level of of i9 that you can buy right now. So go check that out, and I'll put all the detailed specs below. We have G Skill RAM here. Uh, don't remember the speed, and I can't read it from here, so I'll put that down below uh, as well. Like, yeah, I can't read it from here, uh, but it's 128 128 gigs. Uh, we've got the 4090. And then uh, somewhere in here is the uh, NVMe drive, which is a two terabyte N NVMe drive. I'm a big fan of just having the one drive. It sounds like life is It's probably stuck behind here. This giant heat sink that you see, this mirror uh, is my guess, but uh, but we'll see. So, all right, so it's time to, uh, actually let's, let's plug in this GPU before we forget. Nicely done there. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be time to fire this thing up. So that unboxing was actually back in October. It is currently January. So I've been using the desktop for three, almost three months now. Um, so not only did I benchmark it, but I've actually been putting it through the through the trenches, right? Whether it's for gaming, whether it's for Twin Motion, whether it's for Revit, whether it's for Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and all the other stuff that I use it for, and it is a beast. I have to say. Um, so we're going to jump into the benchmarking in a little bit. Um, two updates from that video back in October. Um, first is those panels that get removed on this. So these panels here, these panels here, um, they're actually acoustic panels. So um, they don't affect airflow too much. I mean, obviously, you're going to get more airflow when they're off. But what they do is they actually um, reduce the sound of the fans and the, 
PC when it's running. It definitely does. If you have them both off, um, I can definitely hear a big difference in the amount of sound coming off the desktop. Typically, when I'm doing things like gaming or twin motion or things where I know it's going to be pumping a lot of heat, I actually do take them off because I just I haven't tested, but I'm assuming it's better airflow. But that's actually what they're for. They're not filters. They're actually acoustic acoustic panels, and they actually do a really good job at that. The second thing is on the graphics card side, so the side with all the pretty Binbox logos and stuff, I did actually end up replacing the solid cover with a glass cover. The gamer inside me just had to show off this incredibly sexy graphics card and CPU and motherboard and everything like that. So here's a little shot of what that looks like, and I just had to do it. It was like 30 or 40 bucks from Fantex, and I just, I just simply had to do it. So now part of the reason why I thought this would be great to compare is that these are essentially the same computers, okay? So this is a 13th gen Intel i9 laptop. It's got a laptop version of the 4090 graphics card. It's got 64 gigs of RAM. So that's one of the big differences between the two. And it also has a two terabyte hard drive and all that. So essentially the laptop and the desktop are basically identical in specs except for the RAM. One's got 128, one's got 64. Otherwise, across the board, they're basically the laptop version of the desktop. So I thought this would be a really, really good opportunity to benchmark the two against each other and really see what the difference is between the two. So the other thing to note with the laptop is I this is by far, I've had, I think, three or four Binbox laptops um, over the last three or four years. And this is by far my favorite um, case, my favorite chassis for the laptop. It's got a mechanical keyboard. It's got a really nice form factor. It feels very solid and sturdy. Um, it's nice and thin and light. Um, it obviously makes a little noise. If if you have a laptop that's a performance laptop and it's quiet, you're going to have problems. That means it's not cooling correctly. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. These fans, they're going to be loud because they got to turn on and so on and so forth. I also do usually run it when I'm at my desk in the office or here in this office. I'm usually on a cooling pad and that is just my personal preference um, to just keep everything even cooler. You don't necessarily need it, but um, you know, it's just one of those things that I would recommend if you're using a performance laptop. It's actually got a unique resolution. Um, it's 2560, so it is a 2K resolution, but instead of 1440 tall, it's actually 1600 tall. Um, so some people might not get used to that right off the bat, but I love it. That extra 200 or so pixels, you definitely feel it. It takes a little getting used to if you're used to a 16 by 9 perfect ratio. Um, I think this is 1610, um, but I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful monitor, gorgeous, gorgeous uh, screen, and it does have a decent amount of peripherals. It's um, a couple of USBs in the side, a couple of USB-Cs. Um, the one thing I kind of wish it had um, is on the back side, it only has a USB-C um, and not the USB 3.0, whatever the standard USB was. And just for some of the peripherals I have, it would be nice to have the USB regular USB port back there as well as the USB-C, but otherwise, you know, really cool. It does have the option for liquid cooling as well. Um, that's pretty neat. I haven't used it, um, but I have uh, heard of some folks who can, and that's a desktop liquid cooler that you plug in. So overall, by far one of my favorite chassis so far from Binbox. Um, I've been working on this particular one for, I think, about a year, um, and I absolutely 100% love it. So with all that being said, I think it's time to jump in and look at the benchmarks between these two computers and then see how a laptop compares to the desktop and see if maybe that gives you an idea of maybe what you want to do or what options make sense for you. So what we're going to do first is on the left hand side is actually the RFO benchmark. Um, for those of you not familiar with the RFO benchmark, Google it. I'll put a link below as well. Um, but basically it's a, um, a benchmark tool that was created a while ago on the Revit forum. Um, now it's being upkept by Aaron Mahler um, and the Parallax crew. So um, there is a new version every year. And uh, basically what it does is it runs through a series of events in Revit and it times how fast you do them. There's a bunch of projects involved, so it does upgrading, rendering, all that good stuff. And basically you want lower, the lower the seconds, the better. Um, so essentially on the left-hand side, what you see here, uh, this guy over here, this is actually our, our desktop PC. And on the right-hand side, this is our laptop PC. Okay, so if we look uh, at some of the numbers here, uh, it's the exact same benchmark being run on both machines. And you can see the first, the first, um, the first test it runs is updating a uh, previous version file. Um, so you can see this put this took 6.42 seconds, whereas the laptop took eight seconds. Um, and then there's a bunch of model creation benchmarks. So things like opening and loading templates, creating uh, groups of walls, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it gets added up to this total down here. And so you, you can see is that the desktop um, ran at about 56.6 seconds. 
um, whereas the laptop ran at about 70.8 seconds. And so the one thing I noticed in the RFO benchmark is that we're anywhere from 20 to 30% faster on the desktop. I know these numbers seem close, 20 seconds, it's not a big deal, but remember this is a benchmark tool, right? So you're comparing you're comparing two different things. So a tw you know, even though it's only 20 seconds, right? 20 seconds is actually 30%, you know, 20 something percent. Um, that's a, you know, that's a major difference in the, in the, the speed of the machine. As you can see here, I had a little bit of a problem with the exports um, when I was running on the desktop. I think it just freaked out on me. Um, but you can look at some of the, the issues here. So exporting, um, exporting all views to DWG's uh, laptop took 73 seconds. The desktop took about uh, 57 seconds. Not too much of a difference um, to export to PNG, which is kind of interesting, um, 37 to 30. Um, rendering 30.88 for the laptop and 20 seconds for the desktop. So again, 33% uh, or 28%, whatever <laughs> the difference is, not doing the math now, um, between rendering between um, the desktop and the laptop. And then finally, there's some graphic stuff. Um, so what you could see here is um, things like changing the view from wireframe to hidden to shaded, um, refreshing views, et cetera, you know, that kind of stuff, which is what I call the snappiness of Revit. Um, you could see the laptop hit a 20, um, which these are all very respectable scores if you compare it to other machines. Um, and then the desktop hit a, a 16 to 17. So in conclusion on the Revit benchmark between the, the laptop and the desktop, roughly 20 to 30 percent difference um, i guess the average would probably be in the 25 percent between all the tests um, so that's that can be pretty significant um, you know when you're looking at the at the comparison between between the two the two a desktop versus a laptop version of essentially the same thing now on the right hand side these are snips from twin motion uh, same scene in twin motion on both the desktop and the laptop uh, the desktop up here and the laptop down here um, so you notice a couple things to look at is the frames per second um, so the desktop was running at about 51 frames per second, while the, the uh, laptop was about 31 frames per second. So again, we're looking at 30 to 40 percent of a difference in frames per second, right? Um, obviously, with the larger um, GPU RAM, um, you're using more on the laptop. So we're using about 50, 43 percent of our GPU RAM, whereas on the desktop, we're using 29 percent of our of our RAM. Um, the GPU was. 90% just because what you were doing. CPU is about the same. Um, a couple other things to look at is um, the rendering time. So I did a rendering and you could see the laptop took about three minutes and 22 seconds. So this was a, I think it was a path tracer render. Um, and then the, the desktop was two minutes. So again, we're looking at that 30-ish percent difference. For a laptop, extremely respectable numbers. But it is interesting to see that for the desktop, you're almost getting 30-ish, if not more percent better performance on the desktop version. So in conclusion, if you're trying to decide between the laptop or a desktop, you can't really figure out what makes sense for you. I think it depends more on what your workday looks like and where you actually are doing most of your heavy lifting with the computers, right? There's, there's the balance of the cost, of course, but if you're somebody that's doing heavy duty lifting in Revit or Twinmotion or Premiere or any of these, uh, Enscape even, right? Any of these heavy, heavy programs uh, or large models and you need the 128 gigs of RAM, then it may make sense. But of course, if you're mobile all the time and you're actually doing the heavy lifting mobile, then that's another thing to think about. Or maybe you're never doing heavy duty work when you're walking, when, when you're walking a site or when you're out at a meeting or something like that. And so then that might make sense to have the desktop. Um, so really, I think it has a lot more to do with your typical daily life and how you how you work with it. I will tell you, it's obviously very convenient to have um, a laptop that is fairly light, fairly thin, and it has a 4090 with a ridiculous specs within it. You don't necessarily need both, right? Um, so I think it depends on what you're doing. And I hope this video at least gave you an idea of if you're looking between um, a notebook or a desktop, how much better performing um, desktop hardware is versus the notebook hardware. Um, and also hopefully you've seen how incredibly awesome these BIM box machines are and how happy I have been over the last three to four years of using them. So if you are interested in looking at a new laptop or desktop, I definitely suggest you check out BIM box and you can head on over to bimbox.bimafterdark.com. Let them know that you saw this video here and they will hook you up um, and, and tell you anything you need to know. And thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this little video of mine.